every year my town, Occoquan, Virginia, does a peep week. So my latest project was brainstorming ideas for something to do for that week. And it combines 3D printing, peeps, and string art. Well, greetings, party enthusiasts. My name is Vicki Soma. This is Teagall 3D. In today's episode, we are going to talk about my 3D printing slash string art peep bunny rabbit. This project, like most of my projects, starts before I even open up any kind of modeling software. I tend to do a lot of brainstorming sketches on paper still, and then I would also highly recommend, before you start modeling, think about sizing. Because uh, a lot of times, the size of the piece is going to dictate how you're going to attack it. Uh, in this case, I knew I was going to be working with embroidery floss, and I knew unlike regular string art projects, I was going to need to use a needle. Uh, so I took my calipers out and I took my needle, which happened to be a size 24 tapestry needle, and I got some measurements. So the eye of the needle, the widest part of it, was just at one millimeter, and the whole length of the needle was about 38 millimeters. So I decided with the holes that my actual uh, needle and the embroidery flask would be going through, I wanted them to be two millimeters by two millimeters. And then knowing that size, kind of dictated the sizing of the rest of the piece. So the final piece ended up being about 126 millimeters high, uh, which is about five inches. I knew I wanted the piece to stand upright, which meant I had to give it a flat base. But not only that, if it was too skinny, like my little flat base was too skinny, it was gonna easily topple over. So I knew I wanted to give it a good a foundation. The foundation of the final piece is 18 millimeters. Another design consideration, uh, unlike regular string art where you're wrapping around nails, uh, you're gonna be doing the stitches. And I didn't want your stitching or your knots to be showing uh, outside the border of the bunny and so there's like a little ditch or well uh, going around to kind of hide the excess embroidery floss in the final piece. With all those considerations if you look at the cross section of the little peep bunny there'll be uh, four millimeters of just base and then it tapers in. I have a, a two millimeter inset uh, for my stitching, my little ditch for my stitches. Uh, to make the printing easy, uh, we taper that in at 45 degree angles. And so there's like two millimeters of angling in, and then uh, six millimeters of our little ditch for our two layers of stitches, and then a little two millimeters angle out, and then back up to four millimeters for our border. After all those design decisions were made, that's when I opened up Blender. And here's a quick recap of my process. Uh, I pulled in what's known as an empty, so I can put in a reference image. And then I used Bezier curves to trace out the shape of my bunny. But I only had to model half of the bunny because it's symmetrical, and I used a mirror modifier to make it whole. I converted my Bezier curve to a mesh. I switched into edit mode and highlighted all of the vertices and made it a face. And then I went ahead and extruded it up four millimeters. Then, I know I'm getting ready to do my taper, I extruded up two millimeters, then I inset uh, two millimeters. And quick tip, whenever you're using inset and you wanna type in specific dimensions other than you know like eyeballing it, uh, before you do that, go to object apply scale. So whatever size your object is becomes the one, 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 and that's what the inset dimensions are based on. Once it did inset, I selected a whole uh, edge loop and dissolved it because I didn't need that anymore. Um, I extruded up again. Then again, we had sy symmetry going, so I added a mirror modifier so the top and the bottom would match. At that point, I just wanted to make a bunny that's exactly like the same thing and smaller. You'd think scale would work, don't do scale. Uh, what I would do instead is you want to make an inset of it. In my case, uh, I went ahead and highlighted the whole outline of my bunny. I duplicated it and then used the separate feature to make it a new object. And then I uh, inset that uh, to the exact dimensions that I wanted. Got rid of the outside edges and then I extruded it down. So I made like the object that I'm going to use as a whole. I subtracted that from my original bunny and there I had my frame, which looks very, very, very much like a cookie cutter. For my stitch holes, I got to learn something new. Uh, I had a previous video where we talked about the curve modifier and you know, I showed you how you could distort objects along the curve. So originally my thought was, oh, okay, 
I'm going to highlight the border of my bunny. I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to separate it out. I'm going to turn that edge into a curve, do the curve modifier around it. I knew I was going to have a little cube, and I was going to use the ray modifier to make a whole bunch of them, and I was going to have them uh, go along the curve modifier. Well, here's where I ran into a problem. Because the curve modifier distorts your piece as it goes around the curve, and I didn't want that. I wanted my squares to stay, stay the same. I had to learn what's called instancing, and this could be an entire video in itself. Um, I'm not sure if I'll get around to making the video, so down below I will put a link to a great Maker's Tales video, which was very helpful to me and taught me instancing. But in a nutshell, what you do is, instead of um, putting your object that you want around the curve modifier, you create a little plane. So I made a plane, I made an array of that plane, and I attached that plane to go around the curve modifier, and you can see the plane starts to distort. So then, I add my cube. I highlight the cube, I highlight the plane, I hit control P, and now my cube becomes a child of the plane. And it also goes around the curve, but it doesn't distort. I'm excited about this new piece of knowledge because I've already like have ideas of how it's gonna help with some of my future projects. And once I had all my little holes, all I had to do was subtract them from my bunny frame as well. With my stitching, I would start with going in one hole um, from the outside and to the inside and then back um, to the next adjacent hole, uh, back out, and then I would tie a knot. And then I would start going, I'd go in, you know, and do random where I'm going to come out. Uh, when I come outside the frame, I usually go right back in one of the adjacent holes. When I got to the end of the thread, I found it helpful to go under one of the existing stitches and loop back real quick to, you know, keep it tight and then make a knot. And when I started a new piece of thread, uh, sometimes I found it was easy to knot a loose end that was already there, or sometimes I would go under an existing stitch. The 24 millimeter tapestry needle worked really well. Uh, the only thing it was kind of tight in the ears, so I'd have to just angle uh, my needle as I went through the holes in the ears. Finishing the piece, it's optional, but I had the, these little five millimeter pom-pom balls from the craft store, so I, I glued them on to make a little face. It's optional. Uh, the other thing that I chose to do is I dabbed a little bit of glue on some of my loose ends or my knots uh, to secure them and also make sure that they stayed flat in my little ditch, my stitching ditch. Oh, why did I think of that earlier than the video? The stitch ditch. If you are interested in having a little peep bunny of your own, there's a number of options here. Uh, first off, if you are a 3D printer, uh, you could go to prusaprinters.org and download the 3D model that you can print yourself. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, but you would like to make one of these of your own, I do have DIY kits listed up on Etsy. That includes the 3D printed frame, uh, matching embroidery floss. I also include a size 24 tapestry needle, so you don't have to hunt those down, and three five millimeter pom-poms that you can use for the optional facial features. And then finally, if you just want one and you don't want to do all the work, I've done the work on a number of them, and those are listed on Etsy as well. Links for all of those, the 3D model, the DIY kits, and also the finished product are below. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope this helps you with some of your designs or give you ideas on things to do with string art and 3D printing. Happy spring!